Hello, in this presentation I will introduce different control modes of the Dynamixel Intelligent Servos. Specifically, we will see a set of examples to control these motors with the Dynamixel 2 Arduino library. The objectives of the presentation are, on the one hand, to show the main characteristics of the Dynamixel XL3330 M288T Intelligent Servo and the register table that defines the main registers to manipulate. I will mention how this type of servos can be controlled with the RC-PWM protocol typically used in low-cost robots to control position and speed of RC servos. Then, we will explain how to control a Dynamixel servo with different modes and we will show example codes that will help you to understand how to use the Dynamixel 2 Arduino library. Dynamixel has many motor models. In this presentation we will focus on the servo, that I, the servo model I mentioned before as they are one of the most affordable models uh, with a high set of features that are of interest in many low-cost robots. In the examples that I show I will use the OpenRB150 controller board that includes a 32-bit SAMD 21 Cortex MZ M0 processor. Although other types of uh, electronics, let's say more uh, conventional electronics such as Arduino Uno, can be also used. Here I show the main characteristics of the motor I'm going to use. In order to control the servo, we must write a series of values in a control table of registers. We will distinguish between values that are safe in the EEPROM memory of the internal microcontroller and therefore its value is maintained even if the power supply is disconnected from values that will be saved in the RAM memory of the microcontroller. We highlight the following parameters and we invite you to look at the motor manual uh, or reference manual for more information at the URL that I indicate here below. The motor can be controlled by time or velocity, which means that when we indicate a goal position or a goal speed, internally the trajectory generator will create a smooth trajectory to reduce vibrations and noises. The operating mode defines the way in which the motor will work. As we have commented, there are different control modes and it is through this parameter or through this register the way we actually define how we can want to control the motor. Other parameters of interest in the EEPROM zone are the homing offset value and different limits that we can apply to the signals, but there are a few more. On the other hand, the torque enable register allows connecting and disconnecting the motor torque. This parameter is important since the motor must have the torque disabled in order to be able to change any value that is stored in the EEPROM area. We can adjust uh, the different gains of the PI con speed controller or the PAD position controller as well as the feedback, uh, sorry, feed forward uh, uh, speed and acceleration gains of the position controller. The control goals, that is the reference uh, for uh, control modes, can also be indicated with respect, their respective um, uh, registers, as well as the main parameters for the trajectory generator. Finally, it's well, uh, well worth it, uh, to mention that we have access at any time to uh, current sensor measurements, uh, that is PWM, current speed and so on. We will see how to configure the motor and many, on how to configure many of these parameters uh, uh, using the Dynamixel 2 Arduino library. The motors uh, use uh, their own communication protocol but they also support other protocols such as SBUS, IBUS and also uh, the PWM protocol used in RC servos. This means that we could directly control the position or the speed of these motors using the RC protocol that is uh, implemented in the well-known Arduino servo library. The value of the PWM pulse direction will be sent to the position or speed, uh, will be actually interpreted as a position or speed goal, 
uh, depending how the motor is configured. Uh, and so if it's configured in position uh, mode, then uh, the servo will move between a value between minus 45 degrees to uh, 45 degrees. While if it's configured in speed mode, then it will uh, move between the configured speed limits. In voltage control mode, we must specify a reference voltage or PWM goal. We can define a maximum value of uh, for the PWM signal if the motor uh, supports only uh, or supports a voltage lower than the uh, power supply voltage. Here I show the code that we can use to perform a PWM control. Actually there's no control, we just simply set the desired value for the PWM signal. The set goal PWM function allows to set the reference value and it can be indicated as a percentage. Uh, in the main loop of this code, uh, we are monitoring the values of the PWM voltage, the current and the speed of the motor. In the figure we can see that the motor, uh, starting from a, a null uh, speed, begins to acquire steady state speed after applying a step in the PWM signal. The current has an initial peak that represents the current that you need, to, uh, you need in order to start rotating the motor and then it also uh, stabilizes to a certain value. In this mode, um, and if for whatever reason the motor is stalled, then the current will, uh, would rise and that could even burn the motor if, it, if this is maintained indefinitely. This effect can be seen in the figure since once the steady state uh, speed has uh, been reached, um, I have applied uh, an external torque uh, in order to generate a break, which has caused the current to increase and also has dropped the, the speed, as you can see. In the current control mode, we must set the maximum current. In this case, the code limits the current, uh, the maximum current, to 100 milliamps to ensure that the motor does not burn out. The main difference is that now we indicate the current that we want uh, the motor uh, to consume um, and that will be the control variable and the PWM uh, signal will be actually calculated internally by the motor electronics. If you pay attention to the figures, uh, now the current remains around the target value and even if we start from a zero speed, there's no peak current as before. The PWM signal reaches a certain value in a steady state as well as the speed and if we break the motor then the current will remain stable while the speed will drop without risk of burning the motor. Uh, consequently uh, also the PWM signal also decreases. In speed control mode we will indicate a goal velocity and this will generate a speed trajectory depending on whether we want to define it as a speed profile, so we actually define the maximum acceleration or a time profile in which we define the acceleration time. We can also indicate the maximum speed limit for the motor. Once we have configured these parameters we can indicate the reference speed with the set goal velocity function and in the figure uh, you can see that we have established uh, an acceleration time about one second for the trajectory generator and here you can see the ramp of the velocity. In position control mode we will indicate the reference position and we can control the maximum acceleration and maximum speed for the trajectory if we use the velocity profile or we can define the acceleration time and the total time of the trajectory if we use the time profile. And as you can see uh, from the motor response, the default position controller uh, has a small uh, position error and this is because the integral action of the controller is disabled by default and also there's some kind of quantization error. And it can also be seen that the motor has some kind of speed error because there are no feedforward gains enabled by default. Finally, we show here the code for the current base position control. The main difference now is that now we can decide to reach 
uh, we can set uh, to reach a position but limiting the maximum current in order to reach to that position. So if the motor is uh, braked then uh, the current limit will remain stable while trying to reach that position which is much safer in order to interact with humans in case of a robot. Well, in this presentation we have seen how to control a Dynamixel uh, intelligent servo with the Dynamixel 2 Arduino library. Thank you very much.